My name is Victor Furman. Some call me the Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me now, and we will explore these topics and so much more with fascinating guests, authors, and experts who will guide us to Destination Unlimited. Think about your health and, in particular, any health challenges. Think about the costs associated with treating those challenges. Now think about challenges that Western or allopathic medicine has few or less than desirable treatments for. Chronic pain treatment has sadly led to staggering numbers of people addicted to opioids. Treatments for trauma, PTSD, anxiety, depression, and neurologic disorders are available, but at a high cost and often with detrimental side effects. In their wisdom and experience, our ancestors turned to nature and her pharmacopoeia of natural remedies. One of these remedies was cannabis. Yes, that's pot, marijuana, hemp, many names for plants that have grown naturally and were here long before mankind. Yet propaganda misinformation, misinformed narcotic classifications, and perhaps even the fear of these substances cutting into big pharma profits resulted in them being outlawed and relegated to black market sales. Recent studies have shown the positive medical benefits of using cannabis for treating a variety of conditions. 29 states have legalized marijuana for medical treatment, and recreational use is legal in nine. Federally, it's still considered a Schedule I drug, the same classification as heroin or methamphetamine. But there is a movement in our country to change this. My guest this week on Destination Unlimited, Shira Adler, is on the forefront of this fight and has dedicated herself to educating others on the benefits of these natural medicines. Shira has spent a lifetime helping others to overcome a myriad of life's challenges, obstacles, and personal issues. An author, speaker, wellness expert, and entrepreneur, Shira was forced to go beyond Western medicine to seek answers and new tools to help her own family survive and thrive in today's complicated world. Connected as much in the spiritual world as mainstream, Shira has had appearances on Good Morning America, The Today Show, Dr. Oz, Katie Couric, Montel Williams, and on local and national news outlets, podcasts, terrestrial radio, and more. She's also written or been featured in articles across the gamut from cannabis culture to holistic, spiritual, and traditional parenting magazines and blogs including Thrive Global, Feller and Huff Post. She's featured as the debut mom on Bravo Extreme's Guide to Parenting, and Shira Adler is described as that funky spiritual soccer mom whose throat chakra has no off switch. Shira has generated millions of impressions across a broad range of linear and digital platforms. She's known as hashtag mama, which stands for modern alternative mom advocate, hashtag metaphysical Mrs. Fields, and hashtag the pot mom. Shira Adler is clear and conscious voice for our time passionate about alternative healing, especially CBD. She's developed a unique healing company, ShiraSynergy.com, that includes the world's first line of transformative CBD-infused aromatherapy and CBD products. Shira also maintains a private practice as an intuitive spiritual counselor and certified past life regressionist to help clients through a quick and powerful transformational tool to identify and clear issues affecting them in this lifetime based on the cellular memory of past lives. She joins us this week to discuss her new book, The ABCs of CBD, the essential guide for parents and regular folks, too. Please welcome to Destination Unlimited, Shira Adler. Good evening, Shira. Good evening, Victor. Thank you so much for having me on this fantastic, fantastic show. And thank you for joining us. So let me ask you a question. With everything I just shared about you, what do you do on Tuesdays? (laughs) <laughs> no, just... try to catch up on rest and sit still once in a while that would basically be my every day at this so, point seriously you've devoted yourself to blazing a trail for wellness was this something that you was, you were inspired early on to do or later in life i think that i had 
in terms of my healing journey, very early on, it was pretty clear that I was going to be a little bit out of the box. I've always been very drawn to holistic and natural wellness and just ways of expressing ourselves and our experience on a synergistic level between who we are within ourselves, our families, our communities, and our planet. I really didn't know, however, that I was going to become all those cute little hashtags until I became a mother. That's really when things started to change for me. And in your earlier life, what were your spiritual drawings and designs? I was raised in an Orthodox Jewish community in terms of the day school and the synagogue I attended, but early on I had a healthy appreciation for having a foot in both worlds. My father was a professor and basically created what is now looked at as neuroscience field, but back then he was uh, kind of one of the early pioneers. He was a physiological psychologist and department chair of uh, psychology at an Ivy League university in the East Coast. And so I grew up with a scientist uh, father, but also a deeply spiritual upbringing. And so I learned to create those two different worlds and find ways of connecting them. And I think in some ways my company is very much about that today. Now, growing up in an Orthodox family, my assumption is marijuana was not something that was strongly talked about or suggested. Even more so, when I grew up in my Orthodox, uh, the school and the synagogue, we actually were not hardcore Orthodox. So, for example, my mother drove us to synagogue every Saturday morning. I was the oldest of five biological siblings, and then later two more adopted. And we parked three blocks away behind the Reform Synagogue, which, if you know the, the way... Judaism runs, uh, the Orthodox would be the most traditional. You're not supposed to drive on the Sabbath. They have the most uh, rules and restrictions. But I remember early on my mother said, your relationship with God is up to you, or whatever you call that, sense of the divine. And she, in her language, said, God cares more that I get my kids to synagogue than how I get them there, Mm. which taught me to appreciate the poetry and the symbolism. My mother was a poet and to just sort of take the parts that made sense that could fulfill you on a spiritual level, but to make accommodations based on the lifestyle and the modern society in which we lived. Mm. It reminds me of something that a wonderful woman shared with me when I began my spiritual path in my mid to late 30s and was attending these Friday night salons at a house in Brooklyn and learning about New Age things and the healing that sort of reaffirmed something I had known since I was a child, but really coming forward with And some of it was a little bit strange to me. And one night she uh, very motherly asked me to come to the side and she said, I'd like to share something with you if I may. And I said, of course. She said, Victor, God does not mandate that we be holy, but God would love for us all to be whole. And that was a profound thing she said to me. It really changed my life and changed my path. That's beautiful, and I completely resonate with that. And when I work with people now and they say, you know, in in terms of my background, yes, I'm clergy, I'm a cantor, I've spent many, many years. In fact, this high holiday season will be my 34th year singing services, so I did start pretty young in high school. I like to say I was in diapers, but let's be real, (laughs) but I was in high school. And a long time ago, somewhere on this journey of appreciating and working with families in the most intimate expressions of their lives, in, in birth and coming of age and transition and end of life, all the trauma, challenges, and illnesses, Regardless of your faith tradition, regardless of where you live or how you were raised, the fact is we are not human beings trying to be spiritual. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. And my job is to help people navigate that human experience with as much understanding and appreciation for what vibrant wellness and living and expression can and should be. Absolutely. So getting back to the concept of uh, the uh, consciousness of pot or marijuana as you were growing up, I I assume that was something that was looked down upon. Absolutely. I was like where most families are, most mothers, when we begin this can of curious journey, I like to call it. I was an anti-pot parent because my mother was, and she raised me to be that way. And when you are a byproduct of your society, of course, that, you mentioned it earlier, the misinformation, the stigma, the elements of uh, what this prohibition is all about regarding the plant, we just don't know what we don't know, and I didn't know a lot, and so I really had to shift from being completely anti-marijuana, thinking it was really a problem. I even divorced one of my husbands because he was a pothead Mm. a long time ago, 
And to go from that person and that understanding and that attitude and energy to where I am now is a huge shift. But I think I also represent a lot of people these days who are saying, you know, I hear about this CBD stuff and I'm kind of interested, but is it pot? Is it dangerous? Is it bad? Is it going to hurt my kids? And I get that. Now, what happened in your own family that changed your mind? When I became a mother and I was struggling through, um, I actually had two near-death experiences giving birth to my second, who was now 15 years old, I realized that how I felt after giving birth and then raising these two children who were so sensitive and seemed um, a little more dysregulated in terms of their ability to intersect with what life was throwing at them. I, I really struggled. My kids really struggled. We went through a lot of trauma, a lot of transitions, and it forced me to go down the rabbit hole of this is a yes and conversation. I know about medications. Everybody's suggesting them. Even if I do them, what else is there? What else can allow my kids to feel comfortable in their own skin and to navigate all the challenges that they were navigating early on? That's the journey that propelled me into becoming the CBD queen right now. And we're going to talk more about that journey after this break. My guest this evening is Shira Adler. She's the author of the ABCs of CBD, the essential guide for parents and regular folks, too. And we'll be back with more of Shira after these words on the OM Times Radio Network. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Tune in to The Practical Intuitive, Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World with me, host Robin Fritz, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern. I'll cover personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice, and more, all to help you Tap your own intuitive and healing skills. No ifs, ands, or buts. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human, and she's got this little toy she's always playing with, all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese, and guess what? Egg rolls showed up, like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. <laughs> Steven. Who said that? Me, down here. Ugh, what are you, a yellow booger? I'm a banana slug, Steven. What are you doing in my room? I'm your sense of adventure. It's been a long time since we've had an adventure in the forest. Mom took me to the forest last year. I'm a slug, Steven. It took me a long time to get here. You're right. I should get out. Yeah, the forest is not that far away. Hey, Mom! Come to the forest where the more adventurous you lives. Check out discovertheforest.org for cool places nearby. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. 180 over 111, and I had a stroke. I couldn't speak or walk. This is high blood pressure. Get back on your plan. Go to loweryourhbp.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association, American Medical Association, and the Ad Council. Back on Destination Unlimited, my guest this evening is Shira Adler. She's the author of the ABCs of CBD, the Essential Guide for Parents and Regular Folks, too. Shira, in the first segment, you were talking about how two near-death experiences, the birth of your children, was what changed your mind and, and uh, opened you to the possibility of, of cannabis and, and, and things of this nature in terms of healing. And i just like to go back to the concept of the NDE. What were your NDEs like? Well, the first one uh, was on the table, giving birth to my son, who was very high risk. And um, I don't recall very much from that one, just the sense of it, but I didn't see things. It was the second one three hours later where I died again, 
that one is the one where I can call looking down and, you know, as they say, it was very peaceful, uh, it was very white, very light, and I did notice with curiosity and a calmness, like, gee, that's, that's me down there, and that's probably not so great what's happening. And I had a decision to make, and, of course, I knew that I needed to come back in because my destiny was not, my karmic destiny was not complete, and I was not about to leave. I was a single mother. I wasn't going to leave my newborn and my my two so again, uh, it took me quite a while to recover, and my children, especially my little one, he's what's called an indigo child, which is a spiritual description for what others might refer to as that square peg and round hole kid, the one that has a whole bunch of check boxes or diagnosis codes related to OCD or social anxiety or anxiety depression or people thought maybe he could have a touch of Asperger's, and he's none of those things, actually, but I didn't know that um, until he got older, and again, with both my kids, they were truly unique, very gifted, very smart, just didn't really walk the walk in the most traditional of ways, and ironically, I'd say the majority of kids that I encounter now in their families are actually very similar. The millennials, the indigos, the crystal children, whatever you want to call them, there's an explosion in the special ed system as of the last, what now, 15 years for good reason. The kids are unique. They are out of the box. They need to be taught, educated, fed, nurtured differently. The old paradigms do not work on these modern children. And what were the sensitivities that led you to explore the use of CBD? After several years of unsuccessful or sort of hit-and-miss attempts of medicating my kids for the sake of having them feel integrated and balanced in their experience, especially at school, a lot of pressure from teachers of your kid's hyperactive or your child seems to have a high level of anxiety or depression. You know, Those are all symptoms and expressions of where these children are feeling dysregulated and out of balance and harmony or in a state of dis-ease, which is really what disease is, but on the energetic and spiritual level as well, the emotional level. And so I just thought, you know, there's just got to be something else out there that makes more sense. Because, sure, you can make and maybe should make diet changes, lifestyle changes. You know, we need to really get into the fundamental aspects of what makes a person thrive. And to be honest, we as mammals are all, and this is going into the science part, we're all wired with something beautiful called the endocannabinoid receptor system. And if we can really get back into you know, fundamental aspects of working with plant essences, working with what are called cannabinoids, the, the chemical ingredients that make up both the cannabis and hemp plants, if we can find a way to integrate that medicine, we can harmonize and balance and stimulate and really rejuvenate our brains and our bodies and our spirits. And that's my mission in life. Take the ancient wisdom and mix it with modern science and create what works. Not, you know, they say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. I feel as a society, that's what we've been doing for far too long. I'm referring to over-medicating and underserving who we are and who our children are. And I'm a Gen Xer, so I'm in that sandwich generation between the aging baby boomers, the parents who are now struggling with a different level of challenges, Alzheimer's and dementia and all kinds of things, and our kids. And we're caught between worlds of nobody's feeling great and nobody's thriving. And what can we do about that? And to me, CBD is clearly the answer to all those myriad challenges, illnesses, states of dis-ease. And struggle. So you recognize this starting with your own children. How many years ago was that? Now we're going back. This was before I was on Bravo. So my son was in fourth grade going into fifth, and he's now in a uh, he's a ninth grader in high school. So how many years ago was that? <laughs> Several. But truthfully, the journey started well before then. That was just the, at the point where who I was and how I was showing up ended up on TV. And uh, because I'm not shy and retiring, and I believe that when we share our stories and our struggles and we seek support, we end up discovering there are far more people, moms like me, with kids like mine. And I guess that really started well back when my babies were really babies. So over 10 years now. So you were a pioneer in the field. How did you start? What did you look for? 
I love that you call me a pioneer in the field when other people used to call me a wackadoodle, which is just <laughs> really appreciated because we have come a long way, as they say, you know, Virginia Slim, she's come a long way, baby. Um, back then, because I was clergy, I always at least had a modicum of respect from people who understood that I was deeply connected in, in different ways. But uh, being a pioneer is just another way of saying I recognize that I was not as deeply aware and involved with things that I sensed intuitively could really make a difference, and I was willing to go there, and I was willing to put my name, my reputation, and my experiences all out for anyone to see and learn from. And I think that, uh, sure, that's what makes me a pioneer. And it's funny, I speak at a lot of conferences now, and the book is being used as one of the definitive guides for helping people just get started and understand the basics. I am super grateful that I'm now respected for being that person, but to be honest, in the first several years, it was very difficult because I was espousing holistic and integrative medicine at a time when that was still kind of an emerging trend, and there's so much misinformation, as you mentioned earlier. It's it's hard to combat all that and still just say, I'm a regular mom. I'm a parent who understands what you're going through because I've been through them. And I understand that there's a risk inherent in putting yourself out there, but if we don't and if we're not very authentic in sharing with what works and what doesn't and how it's affecting our kids, then we're not doing our children a service. We're not doing society a service. And you're touching upon a very important point in all medical care, be it allopathic or holistic, and that's that without advocacy, nothing happens today, unfortunately. Exactly. If we're not really willing as parents and as people to stand up and say, this makes sense, and this works, and this doesn't, and here's what hurts us, and here's where we can improve, if we, you know, I always tell you when I talk to conferences and I do panels, whether you like it or not, if you are in the cannabis and hemp space on any level, even an ancillary business, it is a moral imperative to stand up and become an activist because you're an inadvertent activist just by the sheer fact that you're willing to go there and try something that still most people are very uncomfortable with. But it is our job and responsibility to go further, to take this one step out of our comfort zone and be willing to stand up on behalf of others, because only then can we really affect change. Absolutely. Now, let's get some definitions out of the way for our listeners who may not be familiar with them. Everybody knows the words pot or marijuana, but not everyone is familiar with the natural chemistry that's involved. So let's start with THC. What is THC? So THC is the name of the most yeah, I'd call it infamous, cannabinoids. Remember I referenced uh, a whole group of chemicals called cannabinoids that exist and naturally occur in both the cannabis and hemp plants. Cannabis is one species, but there are two different forms of that plant that are especially cultivated depending on what your end result is. So THC is the end result if you're talking about adult use. It is the ingredient, the cannabinoid, that gives you that euphoria, the high, the, it's a psychoactive ingredient. Uh, it's used in medical marijuana, not for its psychoactive ingredients, but in that application, it's simply to create what's called the entourage effect. It acts like a driver for the big honcho cannabinoid, which is actually CBD, which is short for cannabidiol. And CBD is the one that really packs the punch when it comes to, and it's indicated in many medical studies now, for all kinds of illnesses and challenges and disorders. And so people have this misconception that it's the THC that does the work. Not so much. In medical applications, there's a little bit of THC or, or a balance of those cannabinoids with CBD based on what's going on and how long you've had it and cancer. You know, harder issues require at least in terms of the medical approach, they, they say you need the THC. Uh, there are different schools of thought about all of that, but you need to remember that CBD does the opposite. So if THC creates euphoria at a high, the CBD actually takes it away. Let, let's, get back, let's, let's talk THC for a second. Because of the fact that it's a psychoactive component, uh, its legal medical use has been limited to only 29 states and recreationally nine. Yet the federal government still classifies it as a class one narcotic. How are the states able to do what they do? Right. So actually, according to the 1970s uh, Controlled Substances Act, all cannabinoids 
technically fall under that category, my Schedule 1. And a Schedule 1, by definition, means that there is absolutely no medical benefit, that it is such a dangerous substance, it can't be studied, researched, touched, handled, all of that. It, it's hardcore, scary bad, which is really funny because, come on, does anybody believe that anymore? And the answer is simply absolutely not. So on a, on a federal level, unfortunately, we have Jeff Sessions still in office who just has a personal issue with marijuana and every aspect of these plants. But he's making it a little tricky because he technically called all cannabinoids, uh, counts them as uh, Schedule One substances, and we just simply know that's not to be true at all. In fact, no question. Nobody is doubting that there's medical efficacy to these cannabinoids. So on a state-to-state -state level, what happens is that it's business as usual, meaning when Jeff Sessions tried to revoke the coal memorandum and tried to make it where they were able to, you know, let's say use government money and go after uh, labs and, and research centers and medical marijuana programs, the fact is on a state-to-state -state level, basically people thumbed their nose at him and said, yeah, you might say that, but... We're still protected on a federal level from his being able, Sessions, meaning his, him, from being able to go after and using federal money to, to go after these companies. So on a state-to-state -state level, it's business as usual. And here in New York, where I live, we now have a, a clear statement from the governor that says, yeah, we're not really uh, in the DA's office. We're not going to go after and prosecute people for low-level marijuana offenses, which has been the standard in this country for so long. And it's really encouraging to see states interested in running their businesses and allowing doctors and industry to grow and considering the benefits of what um, the taxation of this new industry could mean and, and how many people this can help. My guest this evening is Shira Adler. She's the author of the ABCs of CBD, The Essential Guide for Parents and Regular Folks Too. Shira, please tell our listeners where they can get your book and find out more about Shira Synergy and all the work you do. So my consumer products company is the only holistic CBD system, and that is on shirasynergy.com. And you can find me uh, and find out more about what I do on shiraadler.com, and the book is available on Amazon. And we'll be back with more of Shira Adler in this fascinating and very important topic after these words on the OM Times Radio Network. You're listening to OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired Conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Hi, this is Bill Maher. I can find humor in almost anything, but one thing I never laugh about is cruelty to animals. If you don't get the joke either, write People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, 501 Front Street, Norfolk, Virginia, 23510. Back on Destination Unlimited, my guest this evening, Shira Adler. She's the author of the ABCs of CBD, the essential guide for parents and regular folks, too. So the other uh, major active ingredient we're talking about is CBD, which I believe is cannabidiol. Is that correct? Yes. CBD is short for cannabidiol. And what is cannabidiol? Cannabidiol is the single most, according to me and many, many people, single most important healing ingredient on the planet. It naturally occurs in both the cannabis and hemp 
uh, iterations, which is really one plant species, but different forms of the plant. The industrial hemp side, which is what I do because I have an over-the-counter kind of consumer products company. I can't legally touch or deal with anything from cannabis, but I can do it from hemp. Um, the industrial hemp or hemp plants must, by law, have less than 0.3% THC, which we mentioned earlier. But it's the CBD that is the anti-inflammatory agent. And if you think on a fundamental level of anything that you know that creates disharmony or disease or, or a problem, there is a shared symptomology of every issue that we as beings and mammals go through. It's called inflammation. Inflammation is the number one problem. If there's something off, whether it's a mood dysregulation response, whether it's eczema, whether it's something that comes out through your skin or it affects you internally, it's really that you're having an inflammatory response to some stimulus. So CBD, if you remember nothing else, is that it's anti-inflammatory. It also has no side effects and no contraindications. So whatever you're on, whatever your background, whatever you've dealt with, whatever medications you still may take, it won't interfere. CBD creates homeostasis in the body. And that endocannabinoid receptor system, which we are all mammals are wired with, actually regulates all your other systems, which is a powerful expression of just how beautiful our human body can be. Is CBD legal in every state? CBD technically is not legal in every state. In order for it to be legal, it has to be imported. It has to be part of, let's just say, the hemp side now. I'm not talking about the cannabis side because I'm, that's my company. Um, and again, you can read all about this in the book, so there's more to discuss. But we, we need hours, not 20 minutes <laughs> to get through it. But CBD is only legal if, let's say, from the hemp side, it's in accordance with a, a, a farm that is connected to a department, state, uh, state Department of Agriculture or a research facility. There are very strict rules about who can grow it and under what either imported or domestically grown. Uh, there have to be proper licenses. You have to be under the Farm Bill of 2014. Uh, that's what makes it legal CBD, and it is not legal in every state. And sometimes you get an official who actually tries to make CBD specifically illegal. And we always work through that. Um, by we, I mean organizations that are like Marijuana Policy Project, the Hemp Industries Association, the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws, Normal, and another group I work with is Drug Policy Alliance. Uh, really powerful, great activists and advocacy groups. Now, I met you while attending the Cannabis World Business Expo here in New York a couple of weeks ago. And I learned from some of the exhibitors that while marijuana has been legalized in some states, hemp has not. What's the difference between marijuana and hemp to begin with? I didn't know there was a difference. There is a difference between marijuana and hemp because hemp is usually referred to as the industrial hemp kinds of products. And generally speaking, the funny part is you can have a state that has a medical program, but the hemp side technically should be legal because it has less THC in the plants. All the products have to come in and show that they are cultivated, all the cultivars, with less than 0.3% THC. Everybody's nervous about the THC, which is the part that creates it's the active ingredient. And so, ironically, we still have to educate us to the differences because marijuana might be referring to the THC aspect, the cannabis side of the industry, whereas industrial hemp and CBD is usually more referenced with the hemp side of the industry. I see. And... Let's talk a little bit about some of the beautiful benefits of the CBD and the products that you manufacture. Give us some examples of what it does. I'm very unusual in my approach to working with CBD. Uh, the strongest way for the human body on the physiological level, on the brain chemistry level, is to take the tincture. And not all tinctures, and not all CBD is created equal. It really depends on where it's grown, the plants themselves, how they're cultivated, what the genetics of that plant are. I work with a master grower who's one of the best in the world. He's really an endocannabinoid scientist and a researcher, and he has cultivated his plants, their hemp plants, but he worked on them for five years before he even planted them in the ground. So he's not one of those that just rushed to make money and threw the plants and the seeds in the ground and said, I want to farm, I want to get a license. That's not our approach. Our approach is do it right and do it differently and fully. 
So the tinctures and the body butter I get are his genetically unique cultivated hemp plants. And so the cannabinoid structure, the bioavailability, the full spectrum oil is really powerful. And you take a tincture, for example, you have sublingual. You just put some drops or half a dropper to a full dropper under your tongue. You hold it for a couple seconds. That's the best way because the endocannabinoid receptors are in your mouth and in your tush. And I'm not about to make suppositories as part of my company line. I'm just not going there. Um, and I love the tinctures. I love the body butter. It soaks in through the skin. And it's re- we make very strong tinctures. Most companies sell 250 milligrams in the whole bottle. I started 1,000 milligrams. My products are designed stronger because they work for real people with real things. And that's how I got my kids off Western meds and I got my dog to stop having seizures. And by the way, I'm not a medical professional. I cannot diagnose, trait, prevent, or cure anything. I'm just telling you stories about what works for me and my kids. And I, I, don't, I can't make any medical claims. I can just tell you the experiences that we have. And then from the tinctures... I expanded into, I actually started with aromatherapy first. Before I got into CBD, I had this uh, beautiful aromatherapy line. Essential oils are the same as what people in the cannabis and hemp world call terpenes. They're the parts that make the plants smell pretty. Lavender, citrus, pine. If you think of fragrance coming off of uh, plants, that's really what we're talking about, the essential oils of the terpenes. And essential oils, aromatherapy, is the oldest modality on the planet to affect change on all three levels of your being simultaneously, mind, body, and spirit. It just makes sense to me to have the interplay and the dance between these plant essences, between essential oils and those terpenes and the cannabinoids and the phytocannabinoids and cannabis and hemp. And when you blend those, when you take a tincture and you do what's called a spray down, that's what somebody called what happens when you take one of my sprays and you, you just pump a couple times in front of your face. You're microdosing the CBD, you're inhaling this beautiful aroma, and the combination really, really does something beautiful to your system. And it's unique. No one else is doing that yet. But then again, you call me a pioneer for a reason, and I'm, I'm just going to go with that. I'm going to relate an experience that I've had personally. In fact, this involves my wife. My wife had a very bad, uh, very severe sinus infection, which got into her ear. Her ear got clogged. It actually began affecting her balance. Uh, She was treated with all types of allopathic medicine, and nothing worked. And uh, our health food provider uh, had CBD available, CBD oil. And uh, she started taking some drops under the, sublingually under the tongue, as mm-hmm. you had described. And within two days, her ear opened and cleared. The dizziness went away, and that was the end of the problem. So this truly was a miracle, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely. And I, by the way, I hear these stories all the time. Every day, I get an email from someone who says, tells me, my son was coming off of, I got one yesterday, uh, He's weaning off of Zoloft, which is one of the standard in America pharmacological responses to anxiety and depression, and whatever, and they're given to a lot of teenagers. And Zoloft almost killed my daughter. She was, it was overprescribed. And we didn't know then what we know now. And it was a really scary drug and a scary experience for us as a family. So when I read that a mother is using my products and this is what her son is able to do and feel and come off of medications and living normally and sleeping normally and just feeling healthy and well, it makes me cry because that's another mother with another child who's going through what I went through with mine. What about using CBD products to help people with addiction? I actually work with a lot of people as a spiritual counselor, and I see them coming to me with all forms of addictions from opiates through kratom, which is uh, people have this mistaken understanding that kratom is a plant, and they figure, oh, it's imported, it's natural, it's from a foreign country, which means you don't know what the root system is absorbing, you don't know if there are pesticides in it, you you just don't know. There's no lab testing on it. It's dangerous to do that. Plus, kratom has same opiate has the same withdrawal symptoms as opiates do. And so I have people coming in who are abusing everything from Adderall to opiates to sometimes they were on heroin, you name it, I've seen it. And I can tell you from personal experience that marijuana is not, not a gateway drug. It's an exit strategy. 
You want to get people from sm- even smoking too much pot. You know, if you have too much of a high, you take CBD to kill the high. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, in my personal belief and my personal what I've seen and know, absolutely CBD is a, is a huge answer in the treatment of addiction. And again, we are not talking, we're, we're not doctors and we're not diagnosing or, or advocating anything other than the experiences that we've had. What about for people with PTSD? So important today. My daughter is a minor with a medical marijuana card and she carries the diagnosis of PTSD. It is a very, very real part of my family's experience and she and I speak at press conferences together. We share our story. I work with a lot of vet groups who struggle with PTSD. And so, again, my personal experience, my personal testing of what this is about, I can definitively tell you it's, it can be a miracle. Uh, I literally sprayed a, somebody sent a vet over to me from the Korean War while I was at the Cannabis World Congress at the Javits Center, and I did what I usually do, try the tincture, do the spray, there are a couple that are specifically designed that help a lot with that PTSD response. And the man looked at me and he said, I've never tried something like aromatherapy. I don't even know what it is. And I don't know what you just did. But I'm telling you that I feel different. And you could just see the shift. You could see his face relax. You could see his shoulders relax a little bit. He described how it is for him to walk through a daily experience. And he said, I can't believe I could feel it that quickly and I feel so much better. Absolutely. My guest is Shira Adler. She's the author of the ABCs of CBD, the essential guide for parents and regular folks too. And we'll be back with more of Shira after these words on the Ohm Times Radio Network. Humanity Healing International is a small nonprofit with a big dream. Since 2007, HHI has been working tirelessly to bring help to communities with little or no hope. Our projects are not broad mandates, nor are they overnight solutions, but they bring the reassurance that no one is alone and that someone cares. To learn more, please visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Change and growth are part of natural life and also part of your spiritual life. Everyone needs support and guidance, especially during life passages. Upgrade yourself with the Ohm Times Experts program. With Ohm Times Experts, you have access to the best intuitive coaches, spiritual teachers, counselors, astrologists, and oracles. Our team was carefully selected so you can trust. Find out more at experts.ohmtimes.com. You took the first step and quit smoking, but even former smokers may still be at risk for lung cancer. That's why SaveByTheScan.org wants you to know about a new low-dose CT scan that can detect lung cancer early. It takes only 60 seconds and could save your life. You took the first step, now take the next. Visit SaveByTheScan.org for a simple quiz to see if you're eligible and talk to your doctor about screening. SaveByTheScan.org is brought to you by the American Lung Association's Lung Force Initiative and the Ad Council. Have you bought into the idea that you have to work hard for your money, that business is hard? I will share some dynamic access consciousness tools to get you out of your own way so you can create a business that actually succeeds. Join me, Simone Millicis, on The Joy of Business at 4 p.m. Mondays Eastern. Some knowledge belongs to us and us alone. The way our girlfriends walk, talk, touch their hair. Details that only a sister can know about her girls. But what about our other girls, the ones we carry with us every day? Our bond with our sister girls gives life, but knowing your breasts can save it. Go to knowyourgirls.org for the facts you need on breast health. Brought to you by Susan G. Coleman and the Ad Council. Back on Destination Unlimited, my guest this evening, Shira Adler. She's the author of the ABCs of CBD, the essential guide for parents and regular folks to Shira, before the break, we were talking about some of the wonderful outcomes of people using CBD. So I have to ask the question, are CBD products safe and are there any side effects? I am 
so joyful that we have so many options today, and we are really just in the nascent form of this industry. My concern about CBD is that people don't have enough information, which is why I needed to write the book. There's a lack of education. There's a lack of understanding that CBD is not all created equal. Uh, I recently learned, I, I'm almost now the um, Martha Stewart of CBD. People are using me and my opinions as a good housekeeping seal for what companies are safe and good. And I appreciate that. Even if you don't want to buy mine, uh, I, I do know a lot of these companies. I know a lot of the players in the industry. And it matters that you at least know what questions to ask and to look for before you just go ahead and purchase something. There are a couple of multi-level marketing companies coming out with CBD. I am not a fan of those at all. I've seen their products. I think the reps are not educated enough. They're standard sort of just regurgitating some basic information. That's not what we should be doing in this industry. We have to remember something. Hemp uh, is what's called a remediation plant. So in areas of natural disaster, let's say Chernobyl, we plant hemp because it soaks up the toxins and the volatile compounds and the mold and all of the, everything that's wrong with our soil, our earth, hemp can pull it out of the ground through the root system. But in doing that, it goes into the plant. So it, let's say someone is not so scrupulous and they're starting a company and you don't know the farm and you don't know the farmer and you don't know really who this person is. You know, I am the face of my company and I'm authentically sharing our story. So I built, you know, because I'm clergy and I know a lot of people, people have come to trust me. I will not say something is good unless I know that it's good, unless I've tried it. And so in that just because you see something that says CBD doesn't mean you should be taking it. Uh, if it says on the packaging legal in all 50 states or it makes any medical claims, do not buy it. Because right there, that's somebody who doesn't really know what they're doing. Mm. And that's a concern to me. Is there, is there a, a standard in the industry or, or people working toward a quality control standard? Part of the effort to legalize and decriminalize actually involves creating better standards. When people and parents come up to me and say, I'm very worried, I don't want to legalize because it's going to allow marijuana or hemp or CD, whatever their version is or their misinformation indicates, they say it's just going to give our kids access. Well, first of all, that's incorrect. Uh, Second of all, your kids have access, and they're probably doing a lot more than CBD and marijuana, and you should look for that. Uh, But truthfully it'll actually make it safer. If we can legalize and not change the schedule, but actually deschedule, because cannabis has no place as a plant-based medicine on that list at all. Uh, If we could do that, then yes, part of our goal is to also create levels of standard testing and proof of efficacy and require that all companies, they should already be doing this. They should already be going through the right labs and making sure that even if it's small batch products, even if you're a small company, Please take the time to do this right. Make sure that everything is clean, that there are no pesticides, solvent residues, all of that. There should be none of that in your product. And make sure it's clean and make sure that if you're going to come into this business, you're doing it for the right reasons because you understand that you're helping people on a really significant and fundamental level. What do you see on the legislative horizon? Will the Fed ever come around? I do believe that the feds are going to come around. In fact, I think that if you look at what's happening on the hemp industry side, we have some allies that are surprising allies. We have Mitch McConnell, go figure. All of a sudden, he's buddies to us in the hemp industry. But what he's really doing by having presented this new hemp bill is to say, uh, I'm hemp again. And that's a beautiful thing. And we are specifically watching and including language that takes the word industrial away from it and allows hemp to once again become the number one resource in agricultural, you know, this is a billion-dollar industry in cannabis and hemp. But if we can get back to basics and we can get some of this legislation through, there are a lot of even Republican freshman senators 90, well, I think it's like 79 to 80 percent of Americans are pro-legalization. So I do think this is coming. I think it's a state-to-state issue right now. I think Trump is willing to be a state-to-state issue, which is the only thing nice I can say about that man. And I'm okay with that because the tide is going to continue to grow and swell. When people understand what this medicine can mean for their loved ones, 
Do you really think there's any stopping it? Absolutely. You try to tell a mother that she can't have access to medicine for someone she loves, and I'm going to show you a fierce warrior goddess, because you're talking to one right now. A- absolutely. Do you think, to your knowledge, does Big Pharma lobby against it? Big Pharma is interesting in terms of how they're approaching this, and part of the reason it will be legalized is because there's simply too much money at stake. Uh, New Yorkers are looking at the legalization efforts of all the states surrounding us, everything from Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, and New Jersey is coming on board with a beautiful program. And that's going to be the model for other states to follow. So I think that you know, we have people like Bonner coming in, and, and now we have more people that used to be very anti-marijuana and anti-cannabis and anti-hemp. They're jumping on the bandwagon because they're looking at this through the lens of dollar signs. And so as much as I don't love Big Pharma for a lot of reasons, I do appreciate the fact that, and I do think, there is room for everybody at this table. Just don't squeeze out the mom and pops and the entrepreneurs. Make room for farmers. Treat them respectfully. Give them the tax benefits. Let people run their businesses. Continue to allow entrepreneurs to thrive in America. This is good for everybody. And there's enough money and abundance and richness in this industry to go around. And speaking of entrepreneurs, what prompted you to start Shira Synergy? I really almost had no choice to start my company. I simply was dissatisfied with the quality of products I saw, with understanding how people were kind of skirting the edges of what was clean, authentic, and vibrant enough. The milligram doses were too weak, in my opinion. So I just said, well... If they say that necessity is the motherhood of invention, then you're looking and talking to the mama who decided to go ahead and invent. And I went back to the basis of ancient wisdom, and I said, and now let's connect it to modern science, because that's who we are and that's the world we live in. Now, you mentioned the uh, aromatherapy application. You mentioned the oils. What other products do you have? I also have a beautiful body butter, and we also make the tincture in capsule form that people prefer, because it depends on your own personal aesthetic and your habits and what fits into your lifestyle, and I wanted to make an array of products, and we have many more coming down the pike that I think people are going to really love, different forms and functions of this wonderful medicine and use it as lifestyle products and enhancement for all various aspects of your life on a mind, body, and spirit level. And so I'm, I'm pretty excited about where we're going because I know what works. I know what works for us. And if it works for my children and my family and my pets, then it will work for yours too. What should parents tell their children about CBD? CBD is, to me, the most essential healing ingredient on the planet. And if you really want to be, as my mother used to say, my grandmother, healthy, wealthy, and wise. Remember that expression, <laughs> that little sing-song rhyme? To me, it's about CBD daily probiotic and flax, using your aromatherapy, learning how to manage and navigate and self-regulate, and just it's an expression of self-care. In taking CBD and, and the forms that are available for my products and reading my book, you're taking some really nice baby steps forward into a higher expression of self-care. What would you like readers to take away from the ABCs of CBD? I want people, when they read the ABCs of CBD, to walk away with a new perspective, with even just an understanding that a seed has been planted that can expand your consciousness, that can expand and push you just one little bit outside of that comfort zone. And I want people to realize that pot is not what we were taught. Mm, Absolutely. And what's next for Shira Adler? Well, next up, in a few months, I'll be starting a book tour, which is very exciting, in Northern California, and I am starting to speak more at conferences, and I'm available to do that. I, my goal is really to get the company on that next level, which we're about to do. We are launching as a national brand soon. But really, I want to connect. I want to connect with people. I want to share our information. I want to help support communities. I want to make a difference as an activist. And so if anyone needs me, they can find me on my website, shiraadler.com. They can find me through social at the one Shira Adler, which is T-H-E and the number one, and then my name, and also at Shira Synergy. Whatever I can do to help and to be there for anyone with whom I come into conscious contact, that's, that's my mission and my passion.
And what can people do who want to get involved in advocacy and working with their state legislatures to, to work on these products and get them legalized and accepted? I always encourage people to get involved on the state level and just to see what the state is doing. You can check um, MPP, which is Marijuana Policy Project, see what they're up to. They're amazing. Hemp Industries Association, uh, the National Cannabis Industry Association. You can join the trade groups. You can follow the data. You know, get involved and follow the research on DPA.org, which is Drug Policy Alliance, and NORML, which is the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws. Those are great, great organizations. And also, I encourage people, especially if you're looking at this as a business or you want to get involved in some way, please watch out and be mindful on that local, on the county level, on your local zoning boards and your town boards, because even as we continue this path, towards legalization and decriminalization, which must go hand-in-hand, in my opinion. Just remember that even if your state is legal, if you live in an area where you have a town official who's very anti, they can make it very difficult for you to be in business by adjusting zoning laws and things like that. So just pay attention, know who's in your area, use your voice, speak up, and also vote with your dollars. Go ahead and get registered if you're in a state that's legal with a medical program. If you have a qualifying condition, please register for a medical card because it shows our government how many people are interested in this medicine and in saying status quo is a no-go. My guest has been Shira Adler. She's the author of the ABCs of CBD, The Essential Guide for Parents and Regular Folks, too. Shira, one more time, please tell our listeners where they can get your book and find out more about your products and your work. Great. You can find out about my products on shirasynergy.com, and I am on shiraadler.com, and I'm also on social at the one Shira Adler, which is T-H-E, the number one in my name, and my company is at Shira Synergy, and the book is available on Amazon. Hashtag gratitude, Shira Adler, for everything that you do and for joining us tonight. Thank you so much, Victor. It's been an honor and a pleasure. And thank you for joining us on Destination Unlimited. I'm Victor the Voice Berman. Have a wonderful week.